Welcome everyone to another edition of Markets Hunters. I am your host, Hunter Gaylor, and today we've got some really exciting news because there's some relatively hot off the press news about quantum computing uh, in QUBT. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. We've got a great episode today, short, sweet, to the point. So I'm going to bring Bob in shortly, who's the, the CEO of Quantum Computing, who you, our audience, is very familiar with now. Uh, we're going to be talking about the the first in a series of reservoir computers. They're pioneering a new era of affordable and sustainable AI. Uh, before we get into that, and I bring Bob just a little couple of housekeeping rules, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Lots of great information coming out. We've got some new uh, programs coming out uh, in the near horizon. We are on iHeartRadio. We are on uh, Spotify for those that just want the audio version of this. We're getting a lot of pickup on that and a lot of re more requests for that. Uh, and also, all the links that we we have of these are and the companies are put in the description. So if you're looking for the links, make sure you go to the description uh, of these various podcasts and videos, and all the links are going to be there. So without further ado, let me bring in uh, Bob. Bob, welcome to the Markets Hunter program. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Hey, Hunter. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So let's just right out of the gate, as they say, talk about this recent press release. I do have some imagery that we're going to show for our audience, but talk to us about this reservoir computer. You have it. It's out. You've released it. Uh, this represents a step in making a, a very large, largely accessible and affordable to individuals and small businesses. Uh, you are accepting orders according to the, the press release. So yep. Let's just start from the beginning. The re we've been talking about this. We've been talking about it. You've been saying, look, you know, we say what we're going to say. We're going to do what we're going to do. You're meeting the milestones. Uh, and now you, you came out with this reservoir computer and uh, it's incredible. So it's the size of a small power pack. We're going to show it here shortly while we're talking. But uh, the floor is yours. Well, thanks. I think. Um, yeah. So this is just another example of, you know, as you pointed out, you know, we're we're continuing on the execution phase of the company. We've been converting uh, technology we've had in the lab over to commercialization. Um, this reservoir computer uh, is a uh, it's an FPGA based computer. It's a specialized FPGA chip um, that we have that's uh, you know bringing allows us to create um, a reservoir computer that can be an edge device, right? So this is pushing computational capability out to the edge. Um, we think it's one of the first. Um, technologies out there like this. I don't want to make that claim uniquely, but I believe that uh, uh, there are very few, if any other technologies similar to this. It's, in it's intended to be, uh, you know, reservoir computing is central to AI in, in many different ways. This is this handles time series data really, really well. There are a lot of efficiencies that can be achieved with this particular box, um, everything from speed and power efficiency, as I mentioned earlier. So, um, it's, it's a step in the process. It's not quantum computing. I want to make sure that's clear to everybody on the, who's listening. This is not a quantum computer at the edge. Uh, we're going to get there. Um, but this is a technology that, you know, we've, we've developed along the way on the path. It's photonic inspired. Um, our next iteration is going to be a, a true reservoir photonic computer. Um, but uh, this is a step in between that uh, to get to that. And... Um, we think it's it's got real utility to it. Uh, you know, computational capabilities at the edge are challenging. A lot of the AI work that's being done at the edge requires that data to be offloaded and then processed and then the results being brought back. You know, this is the ability to actually export that computational capability so you can get faster results. Um, so you can do things such as, uh, you know, um, data acquisition at the edge, data processing, and then ultimately the, the the product that you need to be able to make decisions on, all from you know an, on the edge side. So it's um, it's a relatively low cost way for us. We think this is going to be in the neighborhood of around a five thousand dollar machine. Um, plugs into the back of your computer. It's not intended to be a standalone computer. It's gonna it's gonna plug into the back of your computer, be a laptop or a PC. Um, but it's going to give you significant capability that you don't have today. Well, uh, yeah, and I. I that's what's really impressive to me. And, and for our viewers that are watching this and not listening, I encourage our listeners to go and watch this video because I did have it up there and kind of showing you the size of this. 
I have a, a, a glasses case and, and it's just a little bit bigger than this. It's like kind of a, a battery pack that you right. have your, your cell phones or something that we would plug in as an external battery pack. So, I mean, the size here, uh, uh, Bob, is extremely impressive. And I want to talk about a little bit, uh, and this is, I'm pulling this off of your website, okay, from QCI. So I want to make sure everyone knows that I'm, you know, this is publicly available information. Um, it consumes 80 to 95% less energy. It's portable, standalone edge computing from anywhere, and significantly less training, uh, uh, training time. And, and it's affordable, a small fraction of the cost of a PC and significantly faster processing speeds. Now, I know that's a lot. You can go to the website and look at it, but there's one particular point that I want to talk about, Bob, and that's this. It consumes 80 to 95% less energy. Now, I think this right. is a game changer in the marketplace because, you know, from a, just a computing standpoint, and, 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 you know, we've talked a lot about this, with the adoption of AI, the more that people are processing, the more people are utilizing these applications, obviously that's going to create a drain, right? right. There's, that's a significant energy, okay? So if this product is consuming literally 80 to 95% less energy, this seems to me like a major conversion can take place in, energy, in, in industry from a power saving perspective. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And I think it's um, that's one way of looking at it. And I think that's where, you know, we hope to see some of the advantages of the implementation of this technology clearly, um, whether it be in the cloud or being at the edge. Right. Um, I think um, as important to that is because as we talk about this being an edge device, you know, pa power is a challenge at the edge. Right. Um, and, you know, you, you, you don't have power access that you ordinarily have in data centers that, you know, where a lot of this information is being offloaded and ultimately um, where the computations are taking place. So when we start pushing um, these capabilities toward the, toward the edge of the, of the networks, um, you, don't, you don't have power access. Uh, so there's an efficiency that's going to be achieved as a result of being able to do this. And even at, you know, it, within data centers, if this device were to be placed on, in the data centers, you, you've got the ability to reducing power. So um, it's, a, it's a big you know, sort of collateral benefit that you get, not only to get better computational capability, but to your point, um, you get more power efficiency as well. Well, I, you know, I, I, as the age old saying, you know, size matters, right? And in, the, yeah. and in this particular case, right, the reduction of size really does matter uh, it because does. it takes up less space, less energy consumption, which is really good. So, so this is obviously a tremendous breakthrough. Tell us where you see this going from a marketplace perspective. What are your goals sure. with the Reservoir Computer? I think that's a fair enough question to ask. Yeah, it is. And it's a great question, right? So, you know, right now uh, we're offering, um, you know, pre-orders via our website. You know, people can not, not even pre-order. You know, you can, you can put an order in. What we're looking to do, too, and this is something that uh, we're going to be talking more about, but I'll kind of give you the first, um, you know, uh, opportunity to talk, to talk about it here is you know we're, we're looking uh, like most of these technologies you know you you develop them with an idea in mind in terms of a use case and an end use and then all of a sudden the marketplace gets a hold of it and what the marketplace is doing it outshines whatever your thoughts were what you you know what your thinking was uh, by orders of magnitude and so uh, we want to invite um, uh, particularly thought leaders in the AI space thought leaders that understand the, the applications of reservoir computing um, to contact us with ideas that they think that they might be able to use this technology for. And we'd be very happy to collaborate with them in a very open way, All right? So on one hand, clearly I wanna sell this technology um, to folks who already understand what they can do with edge computing, with reservoir computing at the edge. On the other hand, I wanna encourage those folks who are in the research space and thought leaders that are looking to look for new applications that could take advantage of this technology to contact us and um, we'll look at ways that we can collaborate. So um, I think like most technologies, the more we can get this in the hands of the users, uh, the greater benefits are going to be realized. So it sounds to me like you're now, the QCI is now moving into the realm where you are launching a developer network program, very similar right. to what, what, what Apple did uh, with the iPhone. It's the exact same hardware. It's a, we, you're opening up this to the developer network to come in and say what applications can be built on top of this this type That's of right. technology. And that's incredible. I, I, I know some of the organizations I've been involved with developer networks are critical uh, when it comes to, you know, thinking outside of the box and having, you know, a network and a community come together and see how can we utilize this technology to start solving problems. And I think that's, that's right. really incredible. 
Um, w- one of the things that I, I look at now is we've seen uh, Apple just came out with their big new announcement that they have these new, you know, goggles that look like ski yeah. goggles or whatever that are coming on. And I, I was reading, uh, Bob, on a lot of the, the boards out there. Uh, you know, it's so big and you've got this big battery pack and you've right. got this, it comes down and it's not like what all of the, uh, the designers thought a product that, that Apple would come out with would look like, especially for their, their you know, first gen and the way that Apple's been an innovator in the hardware space and ergonomics and all of that. As we see these types of technologies from a hardware perspective, and we go back to the size matters. With this computational power, do you think some of the other hardware companies that require that type of processing would be flocking to the reservoir computer based on just the sheer size, power consumption, et cetera? Yeah, I think that's a that's a great that's a great question, and I think it's a good observation. Yeah, we fully expect that kind of uh, the more we get known out there in the space for doing this, I think we're, that'll be a, a natural outcome. The um, the size you refer to actually. We haven't really engineered that size down to the form factor that it could ultimately get to. Um, you know, the, the box you know, needs to be engineered in a way that, you know, it, it can take the size of a slot on a PC. It doesn't have to be a plug-in in the back. It can just be a, it, you know, it can take an expansion slot. Uh, that's easily how this can go very quickly. So the size is only going to continue to get smaller. And the, the more we can do that and the more utility we can find with, uh, uh, users in, in the PC world and the other in the computing world, uh, that will, I, I think it'll be a natural extension for them to be able to incorporate this technology into those platforms. Well, I, I, I'm very excited about this because what I like about technology companies is sometimes you just have to get it, the product out there so that the innovation right, can right. take place. And, you know, a lot of companies, they talk and they want to make sure they have all the features ready before they launch. But in reality, I think we can both agree that we really don't know what the potential outcomes could be because, you know, there's a lot of great minds out there that can right. innovate on this type of platform. So I, I really admire the fact that you just said, look, this is it. We've got it. It's in a state that we we feel comfortable putting it out to the market. And then it'll iterate down from there. I mean, we saw right. that with the iPhone. I, I, I use Apple as, as an example. I was having a conversation with a colleague the other day. We're on like the iPhone 14 Mac yeah. something X or whatever. And I remember when the first iPhone came out, right? right? And so iteration, iteration, technology, camera technology, everything. And I really feel we're at the same precipice for total disruption in the computing space with this type of technology. So I'm really excited. Now for the developer network, and I want this for our, our listeners that may be in the engineering space of the university systems that and students that may be listening, uh, research departments, what is the best way for them to contact for the developer network? Is that a special yeah. link on the website or can uh, they- It is not yet. I mean, we expect to be putting a link up there, but right now they can contact us through the website. There's a, you know, there's a, a link on the web page. There's a landing page for the RC, uh, for the reservoir computer. They can contact us via that and just put a note in there that they have a specific interest in terms of becoming a developer. Um, uh, but we expect to be launching uh, the specific web page for the developer network uh, separately here in the near future. Okay. And the last question, I know you may or may not be able to answer, so I'll leave it open-ended on how you sure. want to do it. Uh, obviously, price point for something like this, has that been determined yeah. yet? Or are you in the So process? I referenced that, yeah, I think it's going to be in the $5,000 range. It's probably It may be plus or minus, right? But we think with with what we have going, we're trying to keep it this at a, uh, at a very affordable level. Um, this goes right in our philosophy of trying to democratize, the, you know, everything we're doing in quantum computing space. Um, and eventually these costs are going to be even less than that. But for right now, uh, that's the, that's the, uh, the price point. Well, that's, that's pretty good as a, as a base number to go off of, because I know some of these major gaming companies and these gaming consoles are, are just massive amounts of money for the processing. Right. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the gaming community is going to respond to this type of technology coming out from QCI. So that's very exciting. Um, I want to just encourage everyone to please go to QCI's website, go to Quantum Computing, follow them on Twitter, follow them on Instagram. They are putting a lot of this information out there. As uh, I, I brought back up on the screen here for everyone to kind of see here, uh, this is their Twitter page. You can follow them at QCI Quantum. Uh, this is the actual video 
uh, on their site, on their social media, where you can get a little bit of a preview of what this looks like. And it's also on their website. So I want to encourage listeners and our audience to go and follow and start interacting with the company because they're giving a lot of great information out there. So you don't have to necessarily wait for the Market Hunters uh, podcast to come out, even though we absolutely love you being on the program and watching us. But you know, if you want the up-to-date, day-to-day information, please like, follow, and subscribe, QCI's social media, and follow them on LinkedIn. And our quantum newsletter, uh, I think we just broke over 500 on that, which is great on our newsletter. And that's our long form where we cover stuff that's going on with QCI in the industry. And we put all the links there as well. So there's plenty of resources for uh, all the audience listeners to follow what's going on with with quantum computing. Their stock symbols, QUBT, uh, really exciting stuff. Uh, Bob, any final comments you'd like to leave with the audience today about the reservoir computer? No, I think, uh, you know, we're excited to see uh, this hit the market. We're excited about the users that are expressed interest and in working with them to t- determine, you know, really uh, the use cases for this. So uh, no, it's just an exciting time. I appreciate the opportunity of talking about it. Well, thank you always for joining on the pro- program. And we'll just make sure you have uh, you back on very, very soon with more information. So thanks so much. Appreciate it, Hunter. Thank, thank you. you. All right, everyone. Well, that was another great episode of Market Hunters talking with the CEO of QCI, stock symbol QUBT. Incredible technology coming out. Uh, Not a bad price point when we think about it. I mean, you look at some of these gaming consoles and what these prices for, uh, you know, even even higher in Mac products. And, and, uh, you know, that's that's actually really game changing when we think about the computational power and energy savings. So we're very excited about that. As always, thank you for for following us. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Follow us on social. We're getting a lot of great feedback on LinkedIn. Uh, and we like talking with these companies because, it, you know, if it wasn't for these companies, we would not have any innovation in the marketplace. So it's very, very important. So once again, everyone, thank you for liking, subscribing and sharing. And don't forget to tune in to an all new episodes of Market Hunters coming to you almost every week now. Take care.